Now we're going to do lesson uh, 313, um, starting on page 337. Before we kind of do that, just to give y'all an update on John, he's getting his second day of chemo. Um, right now, we're at, still at St. Jude. Um, we'll be here at least through Friday, um, depending on what his temperature and everything is, probably coming back. Uh, the only really thing you can notice so far is he was just kind of feeling a little bit puny today. But besides that, he's his normal self. He just wanted to snuggle and cuddle a little bit more today than what he normally does. And those of you that kind of have been around him any time at all know he's usually going full blast everywhere he goes. Um, if he's feeling a little bit better tomorrow, we'll make a video to post to the Facebook page, and I'll send it to you all as well. But um, we're going to go ahead and get started with the lesson. Hopefully, the videos are going to help you all a little bit. Uh, and understanding them and seeing kind of the way that I'm explaining them. Um, so we're going to start with 337. Um, they give you an equation. It is x squared plus 2.5 x minus 1.5 equals 0. And I said the one girl, Gracilia, or whatever her name is, says I think I need to use a quadratic formula because of the decimals. Um, one thing y'all should have figured out by now is just because it's got decimals doesn't really mean that it's going to be hard. It just means we may need to change the form it's in or something like that. Um, she told Walter and Walter replied, I'm sure there's another way. Can we rewrite this equation so there aren't any decimals? Yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to give you a second to kind of just talk about it. So pause the video, talk about it, come up with some ways as a class or as a group and then um, we'll get back to the problem. So now what it tells you is just rewrite your equation, this time expressing it as a product. So what, that, what we're saying is what can we multiply these by to take away these decimals, okay? So to me, what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to multiply them by 2. So the whole thing by 2. So I'll come up with 2x squared plus two and a half times two. If you need to use your calculator, use it, but it's five X. One and a half times two is <laughs> negative three equals zero. All right, so now we eliminated all those decimals and it's a pretty easy, actually, problem. It says solve the equation, be sure to check your solutions. Um, probably gonna use Jay Sean's favorite way to do everything, which is our snowflake method. All right, so a times C, B goes here, your variable here, your variable here. Actually, let's move this over a little bit. All right, so A times C is negative six, uh, B is five. So we need factors of six, one is six, two and three, because this is a negative five. Um, both of these are going to have to be what? Um, oh, I'm sorry, because this is a positive 5. Because this is positive, both of these are going to have to... I may have screwed this up. Hold on. No, because this is negative. Um, these are going to have to be different. Because this is positive, the bigger side is going to be positive. So I've got positive 6, negative 5, positive 3, negative 2. Which one of these add up to be 5? We know this equals 5. So I've got x plus 6, x minus 1, x minus 1 equals 0, and x plus 6 equals 0. Now from there, simply solve them. Remember we had this plus 0 up here. 2 times 0 gave us the 0. Add 1 plus 1, x equals 1, minus 6, minus 6, x equals negative 6. That's what we were looking for. And let's see if I did that right. Yes, I'm looking at my cheat sheet answers. Um, oh, the other thing you have to do, since we multiplied this all by 2, you have to divide your answers by two. 
So we have to take them back out. We have to take that multiple that we used, comes down here, divide your answers by that to take it back out. So x equals 1 half or 0.5, there's your decimal back again, x equals negative 3. And, then if, and if you want to leave it as negative 6 halves, you can, but I wouldn't. All right, if you've got any questions, kind of talk about that as a class real quick um, before we go to the next one. All right, the next one is 338. It says rewriting that same problem, and 337 gave you a new equivalent equation that was much easier to solve. With your team, find the equivalent equation to solve A through F. Um, so again, pause the video, go back and look at them, figure them out for yourself. Um, I'm going to work them out as well, but like I said, you should have already paused the video so that you're not just watching me work them. All right, so 338A was 100x squared plus 100, dang, that's bad, plus 100x uh, equals 2,000 look for a common factor. To me, the first thing I kind of notice is either 10 or 100. I don't really care. If I'm doing 10, then this becomes 10x squared plus 10x equals 10 divided by 2,000. That becomes 200. Again, I can take 10 out again, so I'll think 10x squared becomes x squared plus x plus or equals 20. Equals. Now I'm going to solve that x squared plus x. I'm going to move this 20 over. So minus 20 minus 20 negative 20 equals 0. I'm going to snowflake it. And I wind up with, I need a 1 there. I need a negative 20 there. Got an x and an x, factors of 20, 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. I need them to, they have to be different signs because of that negative. I need them to add to be, so my bigger number is going to be positive. Negative 4 plus 5, so x minus 4 equals 0, x plus 5 equals 0, and again, because it is equal to zero, you have to tell me what x equals, so I'm going to add four to each side, subtract five to each side, x actually equals four, and x equals negative five. Now, you can go back and you can substitute it in and check it if you want to. Um, that's A. The rest of them, I'm honestly tired and I'm not going to work them all out. I'm going to get you started the right way. And let you do them from there. All right, so B, we've got 15x plus 10y equals negative 20. And then also have 7x. Now, if you can't figure out, I did skip a line there. I'm fixing to show you y. So minus 20y equals 24. Now again, you've got to stay neat, okay? You cannot get messy with your writing. But the reason I skipped one there is, so if I had to multiply or divide this by anything, then it would be easy, I'd have room to write it. I can either multiply these by five, or I could divide these by five, okay? All these are easily divisible by five. I always wanna make my numbers smaller if I can. 15 divided by five is three X. 10 divided by five is, 2y is positive, and divided by 5 is negative 4. Now I can use substitution. You want to make those 10x equals 20, divided by 10, divided by 10, x equals 2. And substitute that 2 back into either this one, this one, or this one. I'm going to let you do that on your own. Um, C, okay, so 
338C. What you should be doing is looking at that, and you see the fractions. Okay, don't get intimidated by the fractions. Find a common denominator. Um, in this case, six. Multiply them. You know, get them all to where six is on the bottom of the denominator. So one third. Uh, x over 2 is the same thing as 1 half, and the other one is 1 third. I want this to equal something over 6, something over 6, something over 6, so times 2, 2 6, times 3, times 2. So now I've got 2 6, and notice I'm not really worrying about my variables yet, because all I'm trying to do is get rid of fractions. Multiply all these by 6, eliminate, eliminate, eliminate. That's gone. So now 2, 3, 2. I'm going to go back to my problem. This is 2x squared. This is something over, or you, originally this was just like that, so we'll put an x right there. So that's still positive. And it equal or minus 1 third, so minus 2 equals 0. Snowflake it. You should, if you don't know how to snowflake it, rewind the video a little bit and learn how to snowflake it. All right. Um, D, E, and F. Okay, D, E, and F are all harder. I mean, that's just the only, there's no simple or easy way to do D, E, and F. Um, you want to try to get rid of your fractions. Uh, so you got to find your common denominator and all of that. Um, I'm going to go over D, E, and F. Really more than anything, I'm going to give you the answers and let you try to figure them out. Uh, for one, because it's going to take me a while to explain it. It's going to be hard to explain it on here. I'll post another video um, and hopefully you'll be able to get it from there. Um, but kind of on how you find common denominator and quadratic formula, those kind of things. Um, the answer to D is X equals negative two thirds. E X equals two. F. Now what's kind of different about F is you have to solve for X and Y because um, it gives you two variables. Um, you can have negative 5, 1, or 20 and 1. Now, again, quadratic formula. Some of you are looking around thinking, I do not remember what the quadratic formula was. Um, Tomorrow I'll upload a video for that, uh, and today, so y'all will be, so tomorrow in class, we will have a review of the quadratic formula, and that'll be some of your homework. It'll be more of that quadratic formula than anything, just to be able to go back and do it. All these other steps, uh, getting rid of this, the... Uh, elimination, the equal value method, all those other steps are shortcuts when the problems are right. Difference of squares, all that. Quadratic formula works 100% of the time. It is not an easy formula to do until you get used to it. But once you get used to it, it does work 100% of the time. So if, if you're only going to remember one thing, that's what you need to remember. Alright, 339. All right, it says the two that are working, they're trying to solve this problem. Um, and really 339 is teaching you the quadratic formula pretty good. Um, let's see, I'm gonna look at my notes that I already made. 339. All right, 339. 
All right, so 339. For C and Walter, we're, we're going to solve the system of equations in part F of problem 338. So that's one of those harder ones I gave you the answer to. I tried to rewrite both equations in y equals form so they could set them equal to each other. So looking at your book, okay, some of you don't have your book, so we're going to write it out. They wound up with 2y times square root of x squared minus 15x over 2y equals 2y times 5 and they had 3 square root of x squared minus 15x minus 3y all over 3 okay equals 27 thirds all right so now what you're looking at is how can we simplify it okay well if we divide can we eliminate anything yeah, we can eliminate this and this. So this becomes, and also we're going to divide it by, we're going to go ahead and do this math. But anyway, it becomes x squared minus 15x over square root of equals 2y times 5. You can multiply those together equals 10y. Alright, and we're going to take this to our next step. How do we get this y by itself? We simply divide by 10, divide this whole thing by 10, so we wind up with y equals square root of x squared minus 15x over 10. And on this we're going to divide by 3, I'm going to do that math. So we wind up with square root of x squared minus 15x minus 3y. So this divides by that as well. And actually, it doesn't equal 3y, it was minus y equals 27. All right, we want to get this y by itself, so we're going to add, 20, or add y to each side. We're going to subtract 27 from each side. So we'll wind up with square root of x squared minus 15x minus 27 equals y. Okay. Um, did I do that right? No, I didn't. Because this should have been 27 divided by 3. So that would have been minus 9 minus 9, minus 9, I'm right there. Um, so now, how can you solve, how can you tell me what x and y equal? If you have them both in y equals, you should be able to put that in the calculator. Um, can't put it in the calculator, you need to get with someone and learn how. Okay, now, it says Garcia, or Garcelia, or whatever her name is, and Walter, Realize they had a big mess to try and solve. Wait, or so said, there's an easier way. Let me use a substitution to make this simpler. So essentially what they're saying is, at this point, they don't have a calculator. Um, since we have the calculator, we've already solved it. We know what x and y equals because we can use the intersection function on the calculator as well. But if you wanted to do the substitution, substitution slash equal value, all you're going to do is say, okay, I've got a y, I'm going to sub this in for either one of these, so either this right here and this right here. These are the two we're working with. So what I can do is I can say the square root of x squared minus 15x over 10 equals x squared minus 15x minus 9. Hold on, 
I'm trying to get the computer to come back up. All right, sorry. I didn't push the button on my computer screen quick enough. All right, so this should be square root of and over, was it over anything? No, it wasn't over anything. So now I can solve those again, really and truly. I'm not too upset with you if you just if you didn't even go to this point because we've already solved it in the calculator. Um, they intersect at two points. Remember, if you go back and look at the answers that I gave you for part F, you had two answers, negative 5, 1, and 21. Make sure you work smart. Um, yeah, it says solve the new systems for U and Y. Now what uh, since your job is solving systems in X and Y is to find the values for both of those you're not done. Work with your team to find a way to get those values from a value that you found for you. Be ready to share. Um, if, I hate to say don't worry about that part, but I'm going back to your job on uh, ACT, SAT, whatever test you take is usually to get the answer, especially if it's a multiple choice answer. Um, do I want you to be able to do C and D? Yes, but I'm more concerned that you can get the right answer. Um, from right here, okay, you should know you can multiply this by 10. Okay, you do it to one side, you got to do it to the other, so you got to multiply this by 10. So that eliminates square root of x squared minus 15x equals um, x squared minus 15x minus 90. That's the square root. To get rid of that, you're going to square it. You do it to one side, you got to do it to the other. So that eliminates that. So now you're at x squared minus 15x. And you are at, everything has to be squared, so equals x squared minus 15x minus, or plus actually, 9 times 9 is 81, so 810, 8100 I believe, 90 times 90, uh, 8100, and then just start solving. Um, it's going to eliminate, eliminate 8100, all that good stuff probably did something wrong in that step right there. If you find it, good for you. I'm happy for you. Um, so find it, explain it to the class so I don't have to do it. All right. Um, problem 340. It says consider each of the following equations and systems. Uh, what substitution make them easier to solve? What expression might you temporarily place with you? Um, my printer didn't print very good, so this may be kind of hard for me to look at. Um, I'm trying to look at the answers. It just says C below. Um, first one we've got is m squared plus 5m minus 24 squared minus m squared plus 5m minus 24 equals 6. Um, really, since they're the same, really all you're doing is m squared plus 5m minus 24 equals 6. Um, 27, you could get x by itself and substitute it in if you wanted to. That might make it a little bit easier. Um, for c, I don't know that substitution makes a whole lot of sense, and I'll read you what the answers kind of say in our book. Um, for A, it says U equals M squared plus 5M minus 24, and B, U equals uh, Y to the seventh power. And you can do that if you want to. And for C, it says substitutions. It says substitution would not be useful. So I wouldn't really use it for that. All right, so that's 340. 
We are on 341 now. Let me get the clean sheet of paper. It's my last sheet of paper in this notebook. Liz is probably going to be upset because she just bought this notebook. All right, 341, uh, more equations, more equivalent equations. Okay, rewrite each of the following equations in another form of solving for y. That is, rewrite the equations uh, in y equals form. Check to be sure your new equation is equivalent to the original equation. All right, so all we're doing is we're getting y by itself. So on 341, a... We'll write it right down here. So we went and we've got 5x minus 2y equals 8. Okay, so we want to subtract 5x minus 5x negative 2y equals. Uh, I'm going to try to keep my x in the front plus 8 divided by negative 2. Y equals 5 halves X minus 4. And that's in Y equals format. Um, for B, X, Y plus 3X equals 2. All right, I'm going to subtract 3X. So X, Y equals negative 3X plus 2, so negative 3x. Write that there so you can see it. Now I'm going to divide this whole thing by x. Alright, so now you get y equals, please eliminate, so negative 3. Still got to divide it by that though, okay? So 2 over x plus, I'm going to rewrite that so that I put my slope in the front. 2 over x minus 3. And that's pretty much writing them in y equals formats. Uh, the answer or from the, the answers from the book I guess I should say 341 we got the same thing. So me and the book agree hopefully y'all got the same thing. Again y'all shouldn't be just watching this straight through. Pause this um, Pause it, kind of work on it. Hopefully, we'll I'll get a little bit better with these video lessons as we go, so it'll help you. Um, 342, rewrite the equation for from part B of 341, and yet another form of solving for x. Be ready to share your strategies. Okay, so this part, part B, write it in another form. Okay, this is where some of y'all are going to take the easy way. I really don't care if you take these away. Some of you are just going to say, okay, multiply all this by 2. Um, some of you are going to say quadratic formula, all these different ways. Truthfully, you know, I mean, if you want, again, if you want the um, answer they give in your book, says the students can ask to like the x by factoring out the left side of the equation and then dividing by, by the factor um, that remains. So, some of you probably came up with this x y plus 3 equals 2 and some of you probably came up with x equals 2 over y plus 3 okay I again that's there's no wrong way to do it do it whatever way is easiest for you all right 343 um, are any of the three equations below equivalent? Justify your decisions. Okay, so are any of them equivalent? So does that mean is the left side equal to the right side? Um, so I should be pausing it to talk about it with a group. Um, the answer in the book, uh, all three equations can be compared by solving each for x and solving each for y. The second and third equivalent uh, equations are equivalent. They have the same solutions except for the point one negative two. So what they're saying is for B, or I'm sorry, for 343, that first one, there's no way that they're equivalent. Um, but for B, if you fold it 
we, you know, if you took the second part of that, so if you took, um, or they give you what x y plus two x, right? No x y plus two x equals y plus two and y plus three. All right, so what they're saying is, are those two sides equal to each other? Okay, if you factor this, you're gonna wind up with y squared first outer plus three y plus two y plus six, so y squared plus five y plus six x y plus two x. All right, so again, you can factor it. Um, if you get the x or the y by itself, you'll figure out that they do kind of, they are equivalent, I guess. Um, or I'm sorry, there that equation, once you get the x or the y by itself, is equivalent to negative x equals negative y minus 3. So if I divide all this by negative 1, I get x uh, equals y plus 3. And if you if you went ahead and finished this, you got x equals this is what it would be, x equals y plus 3. With the exception of at the point 1, negative 2, they're not equivalent. All right, um, so we are about 30 minutes into the equation. and You should be a lot further into class than 30 minutes because you should have been stopping, starting, those kind of things. But uh, 344 says Angelica and Dealey, I don't know what kind of name Dealey is. It's a weird name. We're working to find the roots of two quadratic equations. Uh, y equals x minus 3 times x minus 5, and y equals 2 x minus 3 and x times 5, or x minus 5. Angelica made an interesting claim. Look, she said, when I solve each of them for 0, I get the same solution. So these must be equivalent. D. Lee is not sure. How can these be equivalent if one of the equations has a factor of 2 and the other doesn't? He asked. All right, who is correct? So take a second and think about it. Who is correct? Is Dee Lee or Angelica? Um, I would take a second to talk about it, but when you start back up, I'll have your answer. And to me, probably, I'm thinking Dee Lee is correct. And the reason being is because you, like I've said in the past, you can't have exceptions to everything. So what if the numbers were 1? Would they still be equivalent? No, they wouldn't because if you had, if, you, if it was 1, you would have so if it was 1, if x equals 1, then you would have y equals negative 2 times negative 4, so y equals 8, and you would have 2 times 8 for the second equation, so y equals 16. So no, they're not equivalent. That's kind of your justification. Um, you can do it on a table or a graph. I don't care. That's easy to use a calculator on, okay? Now, B says, are the solutions of 0 equals equivalent to the solutions of 0 equals 2 times all that? Again, how can you justify your answers. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute a 1n or 2n or 3n. I don't really like substituting the 1n because it's just not a good one. I usually like to substitute 2, 2, 3, 4, 5. But what you're going to find out is yes, they are equivalent. Um, and they're both x equals 3 and x equals 5. Um, and the reason being is because you want no matter what, if you multiply 2 times 0, you're still going to get 0. 
so that factor doesn't that factor of two doesn't make a big difference. Now that is saying when y equals zero, okay, because we changed it from y equals x minus three and x minus five to y equals r to zero equals this and this, okay? So when this is zero, then they are equivalent. Again, that's not, that's because we didn't change the x values, we changed the y value, and we substituted zero in for y. All right, that's pretty much the end of the lesson homework. I didn't forget to write it down this time. The homework is, gotta find it, hold on. Um, Three forty five through three fifty, or actually through three fifty six. Sorry, I added six problems to you. You'll be all right. All right, again, I'll try to have y'all an update on John tomorrow. I'll try to get him on the video so some of y'all can see it. I know some of y'all have asked a lot about him. Um, hopefully. Maybe next week I can get back for one or two days. Um, if not, we'll keep on doing these videos. Let the sub, let Miss Terry, Miss Johnson, whoever's in there, know if these seem to help or not. Um, try to have a quiz on, possibly on Friday. I wouldn't be surprised if we didn't do it on Friday, um, just because I want to get y'all caught up. Um, good luck at the football game Friday night. Um, good luck with volleyball. Uh, Trying to think of anything else that's going on. Can't think of a whole lot. Um, make sure you get dressed up for homecoming. Take some pictures so I can post them. Um, and we will talk to you soon.